welcome to the Mountain Slayer Garage. Today we're going to be talking about the matrix, uh, tunnels, tunnel extension, tunnel shortening. What's the difference between the slash tunnel and the regular matrix tunnel? And uh, how all that tunnel stuff affects us when we're mountain riding. So um, the matrix was new last year. Had a vastly different tunnel than what came on the axis. Just in the overall design where the tunnel coolers are, how strong it is and everything like that. So. Um, very different, lighter weight tunnel than what came on the Axis, but we were seeing some damage to it last year, similar to what we've seen on the Articats with a very thin walled aluminum um, tunnel with some damage and bending. And so let's talk about first, let's go over the difference between what you get if you got a regular matrix tunnel or if you got the slash tunnel. So we're going to bring you in. This is actually my Axis build from last year we did, kind of a cool sled. And, uh, but anyway, we're going, to, we're going to show you a little bit of why the axis tunnel is different here in a minute. We're going to show you the difference between the matrix and the matrix slash tunnel. Let's just get into it. been measuring the matrix slash tunnel is this one, and the matrix, the regular matrix tunnel is this one. And if you can see this, we drew an arrow up from the center of the axle straight up to where the tunnel is on the matrix and then the matrix slash here and here. And you can see on the slash, if we were straight line up, it comes out almost to the end of the tail light. There's still a lot of metal hanging out back here behind where the center of the axle goes up. So if we look at this, we actually measure this. This is almost six inches longer hanging out here than on the slash. So let's go and show you just kind of how we measured that, just so you understand what we're looking at. So we're looking at the top of the matrix tunnel. Here's the little plastic piece that holds your accessories bag on. If we hold, if we measure from that back to the back of the tunnel here where the tunnel meets the tunnel extension, this little extension piece right here is the same on all the matrix sleds, whether you have a slash, a 155 or 165, it's all the same part number. What's different is the tunnel length. So if we measure from here to there, we can get the different tunnel lengths. We're just going to show you the difference between the 155 slash and the regular 155. So we're going to measure from there to there on both. So here we have a regular 155, and you can't really see the numbers on the tape measure. This is about 27 and a quarter inches from the back of that plastic piece to where the tunnel meets the extension and if we look at the slash the slash comes in at about 21 and three quarters of an inch so the slash is about five and a half inches shorter on the 155 slash than the 155 the regular matrix so that's quite a bit it's almost half a foot shorter that's a lot of extra metal that's hanging out there we started seeing a couple years ago on the axis a lot of people doing their tunnel shortening to have not so much tunnel hanging out there on the matrix since it's a weaker tunnel one can bend and two can cause you to have difficulty in pulling some of your mountain maneuvers. It can slow you down in side hill and in doing bow ties and other things. So tunnel shortening, that's why we have the different the, sh the shorter tunnel on the slash. But if you have a non-slash and you want to shorten it, we're going to show you how to shorten it. Or if you have a slash and you want to make it shorter, we're going to show you how to do that. So some of the things, the carnage from last year. Here's this is a non-slash um, 165. You can see not a good thing if you end up with that. Going to be pretty expensive. It's not like an Articat. The Articat has a, one, a second piece of the tunnel from here back. So if you bend this, all you have to do is replace this piece. On the Polaris, if you bend it, if you're lucky, you just bend it on the tail section that's replaceable. But this is bent in the tunnel. And you have to replace the entire tunnel on something like this, which is super expensive. If you think you're safe with a slash, you're not really. This is a 150 size slash. You can see it's pretty kinked right here. Um, so you can do it on a slash too, even though the slash is a little shorter. You can rectify this problem and help it be stronger if you just want to strengthen it with some aftermarket bumpers. Um, there's a number out on the market. B&M Fab makes a great bumper. Backwoods BMP makes a big, uh, great bumper. Um, I have a bumper here on mine from uh, T-Rex Fabrication that I got at Heydays. Um, we'll just show you that. It's a pretty nice bumper. It's not all the way um, riveted in yet, but it's just kind of sat in place. In place, you can see it's it's pretty thick aluminum. The bumper is, and so. If, and it's got a lot of holes to attach it. So that's, you're going to have a really hard time bending something like that if you come up over backwards or something. You put a lot of force back here. One of our biggest questions I get is, well, why, what changed between the axis tunnel and the matrix tunnel? So let's go over to my axis. It's over here in the other part of the garage, and I'll just show you why the axis tunnel. This really didn't happen to. All right, so here's my axis. This is a pretty stout tunnel. You had to take a pretty big hit on this thing to bend it because one, it's got these big thick channels here that come over the edge here and it's double walled thick right here. And that gives it a lot of strength, especially on the corner right here. 
And the other thing, you have your tunnel coolers under here, which gives you also a lot of strength, which the Matrix doesn't have the tunnel coolers. It's just one small, thin piece of aluminum all the way. It's not the double thick aluminum that you see over here where this piece here, and there's a backing piece on this where it's all riveted together. So the Axis tunnel is a pretty strong tunnel, which you have to take a super big hit on in order to bend this thing, but the, the Matrix just isn't that way. So this sled's gonna be my mod sled for this year. It's a 155 uh, 850 Matrix Slash. There's a couple different ways. I've been looking at this over a year, how to shorten this. I really wanted to be able to shorten it without cutting into the tunnel piece because this piece is really expensive and not really a piece you want to replace if you make a mistake or you have second thoughts once you've cut it. It's easier if you can cut this back part that's replaceable, the extension. But I just don't see, feel a good way of being able to cut this, just the extension and leaving the tunnel in place. So the way I'm going to show you, there's some ways you can do that, but it just doesn't look as clean as if you cut a little bit of the tunnel. And like this, I'm gonna only gonna cut a couple inches at first and see how I like it before I really commit and cut any more of that. But I think a two or three inch cut on the slash is probably about where you're gonna need. That's gonna put this back a little bit, gets the bumper and the snow flap a little bit more out of the way if you're doing bow ties or a crossover or when you're side hilling or if you come up over backwards, it's not gonna really catch and wanna bend. So we're gonna show you how to cut a couple inches off this, you can kind of measure and cut as much as you want. Or if you have a non-slash where it's five inches longer and you want to cut it down five or six inches off so it's the same length of a slash and then use a slash bumper, you can use the same method to do that if you have a non-slash. So let's uh, tell us apart. We're gonna have to pull the bumper off. We're gonna have to pull the snow flap and the tail light off or drill all the rivets out that hold this back extension piece onto the tunnel. So let's get started with that and then we'll show you how we're gonna shorten it. Now the first thing we're going to do to start getting this ready and tearing it apart to shorten our tunnel, we need to pull the bumper off and we need to take the tail light off. We're going to leave the snow flap in place because we really don't need to take that off because that's going to be part of our tunnel extension that we're going to remove and put back on. So do this, we've got to go in here and to take the bumper off, there's a number of T27 torque screws that hold the bumper on up the back side here, over on the opposite side, then also up over the top here, there's also a T27 torque screw right here on each side. So we're gonna take those off. Then to get the headlight out, we're gonna take out these T30 bits. So that allows us to pull the tail light out and then unplug it right back here. And that gets our tail light off. That's going to free up all that stuff. Next thing we need to do is pull off some of the pop rivets. There's a couple of different kinds of rivets on here. We'll cut out the pop rivets first. Pop rivets are going to be like these rivets here. There's also another rivet needs to come out right here. We're going to take all those off. We're going to drill those out. And so the easiest way to take those off is what will happen if you try drilling those out, they start spinning and then they don't drill, they just spin. So if you, under, if you hook a vice grip to the underside of them, that'll keep them from spinning when you try and drill them out. Where's the top rivet comes to right here? We're just going to hook a set of ice grips on those like that. That way when we drill the other side, it's not going to spin and we can drill out the head of it and it'll just come off. Okay, now this one, we have our pop rivet. Pop rivet's the ones with the hole in the center. We have our vice grip holding the other side so it doesn't spin. So what that does, it just cuts the head off it so it's, it's still in there. So what we have to do, we have to pop the rest of it out with a hammer and like a punch. We're left with the prop rivet. Looks like that. And then we have our hole. So we'll go do the other pop rivets, which is that one, that one, and the one like this on the other side. And then these other rivets are going to come out a different way. All right, now that we got all the pop rivets out, we need to get these other rivets out here on the top of the tunnel that hold the rest of the tunnel extension on. These are a little bit harder to get out. Sometimes you can do what I've done here is drill a little pilot hole right in the center and then drill the top out. And since we're cutting this part off anyway, if you mess up this top part, it's not gonna matter. Or another way that's easy to get them out, if you don't wanna do it that way, you can come underneath like a cutoff wheel or something like this, and you can grind off where it comes through the bottom of the tunnel here. And that allows you to separate these two pieces like that because if we get our cutoff wheel up in here like this, we're just gonna do this. So 
So you're just going to want to cut it off till it's smooth. Then you can usually just pop it apart just like that. And then you can go on to your next one and your next one and get all those up. So we're almost like we only have those three left. Now we've got all those ground off. We should be able to just kind of twist this out from those other rivets and pull our tunnel piece off just like that. Now to measure how and make a template for where and how we're going to cut this off because we're going to need this shape back in where we cut it off so that our extension piece fits back on there the way it should. I'm going to make a little template out of painter's tape. Going to lay that right along the straight edge. I'm going to put this one along that edge there and this one along that edge there. I'm going to put another piece over the top just to hold everything in place where I want it. And then I'm going to use a knife. I'm just going to trim this to exactly where I'm going to want my edge at if there's anything hanging over. Now we're going to use that as a template, so we're going, to, we're going to pull that off and then we're going to move it back where we want it. We're going to have to cut this protector off here that goes to our wiring to our brake light. And what we don't want to do, we, yeah, we don't want to, we want to be careful not to cut the brake light wiring yet. So we're going to cut this. This is about where my cut's going to be up here on the top. So we're going to cut this off right here. That'll give us a little more leeway when we cut our tunnel off to not have to worry about cutting the wiring. Go for it. All right, now that we got our painter's tape template in the place, we're going to mark back how much we want to cut this off. I'm going to go with three inches because that gets me right in front of these rivets here with which hold the guard for the wires on. So I'm going to measure back from this flat part here. Three inches, I'm going to put a little mark there, a little mark in the middle, and a little mark over here. We are going to try and keep this in line. We want to put our, we want to keep this and this one over here. We're going to use those as our guides to make sure this is centered where we want it. So I'm going to put a black Sharpie mark on this. So we know where that line is. And then we're going to use our silver Sharpie back here in line with our three inch mark. Make sure that's make sure that's square on there. So that way when we move the tape back, that's going to go on line with that. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. We're going to put a black mark right on there where that is, and then line with this three inch mark. We're going to put a little line there. That way it'll help us line up our tape when we move our tape back three inches. We should get this corner right here where we want it. We need to move this line all the way down like that. This line all the way down like that. Just draw that line straight back there and connect that line with that one. That will keep those. You can use a straight edge for those if you want. But So if we put that edge there and that edge there with that line and then this edge right with our three inch. That should put the corners in the same area as these corners. Fold those down. That should get us exactly the distance back here to there. We can go measure this. We're exactly three inches back right there. Exactly three inches back right there. We want this cut to be square here and here so our tunnel extension piece fits on square. So now comes the, I'm just going to mark where we're going to cut this with our silver marker and this is the line that we're going to cut off with our cutting wheel. When we cut this, all right. Now is the scary part. 
Now we're going to take our cutting wheel and we're going to cut an $18,000 snowmobile. Now when I do this, you could cut this off with a number of things. You can use a small cutting wheel like this. You can use a larger cutting wheel like this. You can use air, you can use electricity. You could even use a little saw if you wanted to. I like this because it's got a long, straight, flat edge and I feel like I can get a nice, straight cut with it. I'm going to start here. I'm just going to line it up nice and straight right against my tape line. I have to be careful because I still got my wire here in the center and I don't want to cut my wire off. So I'm just going to go, I'm going to cut the center part last. So I cut it from the center right over to my corner. Now I'm going to cut my corner just like this, line it up with the tape. Okay, that part's loose now. I'm going to come over here and do this side. Now remember when you Turn this on, it's going to torque a little bit, so don't have it down against your work area. It's going to like kind of get away from you. All right, now I have to be, I can pull the wire down. That gets it about a quarter inch away from my cutting surface. So if I'm really careful, I don't pop this through too far. I can cut this without cutting my wire. All right. And we're gonna take this off. Okay, now we got it all cut off. I had to take out those two rivets so I could slide this back in there, but we can see, now we're going to just trial fit this and just see how we did. I mean, it looks pretty dang good as far as fitting back on. Um, what we're going to have to do, is we're going to have to come back, just clean up this edge because I left a little of these here. We're going to clean that up on the top and the bottom. Okay, now that we got this chopped off, we've trial fit it to make sure it's going to work. I'm just going to take this grinder with a little 180 grit sandpaper. I'm just going to clean off this edge here, make sure it's all nice and smooth so it fits together nicely. So we're going to go do that, then we're going to come back, we're going to install the tunnel extension right here. Okay, now that we got our tunnel piece kind of put into place, I got to have a couple screws and nuts holding it where I want it. This is the other part. See, this corner cuts off here. Since we cut this off, this doesn't match up with that. So we're going to have to cut this down to here. I'm just going to mark this out where I want it with my tape like I did on the top from this corner down. I'm just going to taper it down into Probably that area about right there. So we'll cut that off. We'll cut that off on the other side. And then uh, if we like everything, we're gonna bolt all this thing back in place. Now, when I put this back together, let's look at this. I mean, it's pretty short. Um, I think it's gonna be about right where I want it. I think the three inch is gonna be a good cut. When I put this back together, since I'm not sure exactly if I'm going to put it here, I may cut more, I doubt it, but when I put it back together, I'm going to put it together with these little Torx head screws and the little locking nut just in the rivet holes, just in case I want to take it off again. I don't have to um, drill all the rivets out. It'll be a lot easier to take it out with these, and then I may come back later and rivet it all back in place. So I'm going to cut this off, cut it off the other side, and then we're going to uh, permanently install our tunnel extension. All right, so we have our tunnel extension in place. Uh, we have just our stock bumper sitting here. It actually fits really well. So we didn't change anything from 
the start of the tunnel extension back. So all the screws that hold your stock bumper on from here back, the holes fit. So you're gonna have to go back through and the holes that mount the bumper on from here down, you're gonna have to re-drill those to put your screws in to screw your bumper on. So we'll do that in a minute. The other thing we have to do, so the other little piece like this that goes from here back and the tail extension to cover our brake light wiring. I shorten this a little bit and then I'm just gonna show you what we're gonna do with that. So if we come down under here, these are my screws. These are just temporary screws just holding this in place. I wanna put everything in place so I know everything's where I want it before I go back and rivet everything down. So this, if you just slide that in there like that, that's gonna hold that end in. And then this end here, you just line up your holes and we'll rivet this back in place right here. So that's how we're gonna get our wiring um, back where we're supposed to. On the tail light, since we didn't cut the wiring, um, we're just gonna push the wiring back up in there like that. So we will plug the tail light in. And we'll kind of since put the tail light back in like that, put our screws back in the bottom and we're pretty much done. So pretty much finished product, got our tail light in place. We got our wiring to our tail light covered up underneath. And so what you do have to go through that I haven't quite done yet, drill out all the holes through your tunnel extension piece that come into your tunnel here. So we'll drill those out. We'll rivet all that back on. And then we're finished. We have our tunnel cut on our slash. Looks really good. I mean, you pretty much can't tell it's anything other than factory. It worked out really well. I'm really impressed with it. Probably anyone can do this in their own garage. Works great. Now, I did a three inch tunnel cut on this. I'm kind of from looking at it and comparing it to my stock one over here. I mean, side by side, I almost can't tell a difference with the three inch. And so I'm kind of wondering if maybe I should have done five, but I'm gonna keep it like this for a little while and see. So like we said, when we showed you the beginning of the video with the non-slash, they're close to five and a half inches longer than this. So if you're gonna cut that model and you want it down to the length of the slash, you're probably gonna have to cut somewhere between five and a half inches off. If you want it shorter than a slash, then you're gonna have to go maybe seven or eight inches. So you're just gonna have to decide on how much tunnel cut you want off. So this should help this sled per per perform better in the deep snow. So you don't have this kind of what people call the rudder back here, kind of dragging and slowing you down. Um, you also don't have the danger of hitting this and bending it up like we showed you in some of the videos er earlier. If you're one of those guys that likes to get out and do bow ties and hopovers and re-entries and stuff, this will help this not to drag as much. This should make those maneuvers more easy. And even side hilling, with this not as much tunnel dragging, it should side hill easier. And uh, so uh, great little modification to your matrix. Should really help the deep snow performance. And if you have any questions, get on the YouTube page or in a message me. And uh, if you have any questions about doing this yourself, and we can go from there. Also, I'm gonna look at get doing an aftermarket tunnel or an aftermarket bumper on this. I think if I use a 146 bumper, it'll probably fit pretty well in here. And if, I, if, I, if you don't wanna use the stock bumper on this. So this is Rich, uh, Mountain Slutter Garage. Um, be safe out there on the mountain. Have a good winter and we'll see you next time. Just do a quick overview of video of the shortened slash tunnel and the factory slash tunnel. Let's see if you can really tell any difference. So let's go look at these. Here's our three inch tunnel cut slash. We can get a real good side view here. It's kind of hard to see with some of the banners in the background, but if we come over here to our stock one, this is what stock looks like. That's uncut. Uh, the tail here pretty much is about even with the back of the lugs on that one. And this one with the back of our lugs here, our snow flap comes in a few inches. So a uh, nice little modification, pretty easy to do in your own garage.